Hi, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rihanna, and welcome or welcome back to Fresh Off the Brook. Fresh Off the Brook is about personal experiences growing up Asian American in a predominantly white community, Asian media, and Asian pop culture in general. Race is always been a sensitive topic. Every day, there are debates over race. With our podcast, we intend to shed light on the experiences of first-generation Asian immigrants, not put them on a pedestal. We understand that race isn't everything, but there should be an acknowledgement of people of color, the knowledge gap, and the racial divide that will ideally be broken. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the episode. Today, we will discuss feeling like you're not Asian enough. Hmm. And the reason why we decided to talk about this topic was because in this time in May, API Heritage Month, Asian Pacific Heritage Month, Yay. and yes. again like we said last episode happy Asian Pacific Heritage Month and possibly you could be not listening to this during Asian Pacific Heritage Month Mm -hmm. but you know what you can be proud of your culture any month yeah you should be proud of exactly exactly yes and (laughs) and so because Asian Pacific Heritage Month is about celebrating Asian culture. We wanted to talk about the tension and the hidden competition that kind of exists within the diaspora where someone is seen as more Asian than someone else, mm-hmm. whether that's because of the way they act and their personality or if it's because maybe they're mixed. Mm-hmm. As Tiffany said, this is mostly prominent within the diaspora. So people almost make it like, I know more about my culture than you know about your culture. And then it becomes a competition in that sense. So not being Asian enough as in like, I know more than you. And it, like you said, it becomes this whole thing where we've mentioned this in the past talking about learning your own language where someone will be shamed by another person for not knowing their language as well Mm -hmm. and the thing is it's very complicated because of course it's great to know your own language and sometimes someone might not know their own language because maybe they fall under the types of people where they kind of resent their own culture and they would rather mm-hmm. blend into American or a different culture of where they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. And then there's the people that don't know their own language because maybe they didn't really have an opportunity to learn it growing up. Mm-hmm. And so that's, those are very different things. Not saying that you should necessarily go and bully the person that resents their own culture yeah. and it's going to make them not resent their yeah. culture any, anymore but it just becomes this whole thing where oh you don't even know your own language how are you what the heck yeah I or how do you not know this language or how do you not even know this word mm. in this language I know it so I'm better than you it's like are you really yeah And for the most part, like, you know, like people say competition is good and motivating people. But I know from personal experience too, like being judged for quote unquote, not being Asian enough, like that demotivates you because then it's like, oh, well, I guess I don't know enough. I'm just going to like stay quiet because if I try to learn, then they're going to judge me because it's like, oh, well, now you just want to be Asian, like something like that you know yeah especially when you're when you're younger as a kid Mm. yeah it's so it's so much easier to say something like that about competition being good motivation but an issue that can come with competition in that type of atmosphere is that even if it does motivate you it's motivating you from not the most healthy place yeah right Because then it's like almost like you're trying to learn about things out of spite. 
Yeah, exactly. It should just be like personal interests, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you'll ever really be happy yeah, when no. you do know the language. And just gets it will get tiring really fast. Like yeah, bad motivation. Sure. And that always that also comes from like family too. I've heard like parents compare their kids and be like oh your cousin knows his language but you don't like look at you you don't even know insert what if, what if you kind of play a hand into that <laughs> sorry to like point fingers but what do you mean no I mean because they're saying that to the kid but then oh you know, I mean yeah 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 I don't mean you I, was like, I don't oh. mean you Rihanna <laughs> Oh yeah, they definitely should have like, clarified. It always, it's always you the suddenly parents. suddenly personally too. attack Rihanna. Yeah, I was like, oh, what did I do? Shoot. <laughs> the episode just gets a little quiet. Yeah. Like, oh, I guess, I guess it is my fault. <laughs> Maybe uh, I, I am um, not Asian enough. I guess I can't talk about this topic today. Yeah. <laughs> getting out of your chair and moving to the corner yeah <laughs> no, but Anyways. it is funny you say that though because a lot of the time like kids don't want to learn about their culture because their parents are so like overbearing or like there's multiple reasons as to why yeah yeah parent and, would be the issue but mm -hmm. sometimes it stems from the competition so the parent want you to learn a language so you can be like or better than the cousin mm -hmm. and so they're gonna be super rigorous about this learning and you're gonna be exhausted because you're just constantly just trying to help them prove something mm -hmm. and it's not just for you learning the language and so they're gonna want you to learn it quickly as possible but then that's not really how learning works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you ever had someone go and tell you that you're not asian enough you're not filipino enough or have someone i guess brag about knowing a lot about their culture explicitly to you because you were talking about your experience in school Oh yeah, so I, okay, we always say this like every other episode, but as you may know, if you listen to the podcast, <laughs> I grew up in an environment when I, where I was surrounded by a lot of POC. Um, so I thought you were going to say the gifted program. No, 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 no. <laughs> POC. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. And um, I, if we weren't the same of the same culture but um there was like we were all asian so it was all like oh you're not asian enough because you don't speak the language and i do i speak my language um things like that and <laughs> i actually found out that one of my friends <laughs> if she ever listens to this which she probably won't but if she ever does i'm sorry for bringing this up because i know that you feel bad about saying this but i find it so funny like she said, um, like, oh yeah, Rihanna doesn't know a lot about her culture anyways. So, <laughs> and this was in the context of, um, they were planning, like two of my other friends were planning a like cultural like day to just like celebrate like things. And they were trying mm -hmm. to think of people that they could help like plan with. And uh -huh. my name was mentioned. And then my my friend was like, oh, no, like, Rihanna, no, she doesn't know a lot about her culture anyway. So, like, we you shouldn't choose her. Crying. Yeah. Maybe I'll just, just leave. Yeah. That's so... Which, like, you know, I will take the criticism because this was a while ago. And I also, I did not know a lot about my culture at the time. I know a lot more than I do now, but, you know, like... But you know a lot more than you do now? Th no, than I, than I did before. Oh my god, my words. No worries. Rihanna doesn't yeah. know a lot about English anyway, no, okay. I mean, clearly. But yeah. Okay, we're in the same boat. <laughs> ESL gang. Comment down below if you're in the 
in the ESL in English in the second language gang. Comment ESL gang. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, please. <laughs> We're not alone, right? No, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, you were saying. Have you been told, like explicitly told you don't know enough? I've actually only ever experienced the reverse version of that. Where if about kind of assimilating into North American culture. And so for example, if I were to tell people that my parents don't know English, and by people, I mean other Chinese people mm-hmm. or other Asian people that my parents don't know English, they'll be very judgmental or be very taken aback mm. and say all kinds of stuff like, oh, how do they even live or how do they even this and that? Like, don't they, they came here, but they don't even know English. And the thing is, it's not like they don't know a single word. Is that they're not fluent. I believe those are two very different things. Hmm. But they'll make it seem as if they they know nothing. And then it's it's very it's very much a they're looking down on you. And so and I think it probably has to do with the fact that like Rihanna said, we also said say it's a lot in episodes. I went to a school that was very white mm-hmm. and so with the few Asians that were there, or the few people of color that were there, they were trying very hard to be liked by the other white kids. Mm. And so there would be situations in conversation where stuff like that would come out. And even recently, as far as uh, a few months ago, I, I remember somehow this came up because I was talking to someone and I asked them if their parents knew English and they said something along the lines of obviously do your parents not and I said no no they don't (laughs) and and then they did the whole thing that everyone else does where it's like how do they not know do they just not talk to people no they talk to people like what what are you trying to imply here (laughs) And it's not and it's not even always about my parents per se. I've had comments said to me where, for example, if I didn't know a movie or a band or a song or something that's supposed to be a classic, people people would say stuff like, Do you even go out? Do you even oh my gosh? <laughs> I don't know. I was talking to someone one time. They were they said they went out for buffalo wings. This this person was from America. This person was not was not Asian. They were mm-hmm. they were a person of color. And I, I said that I never had buffalo wing before. And this wasn't a group conversation. This wasn't one-on-one. Which isn't, I don't, is it really that groundbreaking or that shocking that I've never had buffalo wings before? I mean, buffalo wings are a popular, I guess, thing or common enough thing to have. But it's not as if, I haven't lived until I've had mm-hmm. buffalo wings. Someone yeah, probably like, go their whole life without having buffalo wings. And so I said, buffalo wings. oh, I, I don't think I've ever had buffalo wings before. And then they said, do you even go out? Which, okay. <laughs> okay. I do. But all right. But yeah, I have not talking. I have not spoken to that person since. Good. <laughs> Yeah, because why would you talk to people like that? Yeah, that's my experience. I've always, it's, I think it just has to do with the environment I grew up in that I got the reverse. Mm. Because I also, like I said, because my parents don't know English, we just spoke Cantonese and then I went and learned Mandarin. And so I'm pretty knowledgeable of my own culture and language. But then because of where I was, it wasn't seen as an impressive thing. And not that I want it to be an impressive thing. And it was seen as more, oh, she doesn't know anything 
about American or North yeah. American culture because she's so Chinese or she's so mm-hmm. Asian. Okay. <laughs> interesting we should have buffalo like wings for an episode if we ever do a food episode in which we're trying food we get buffalo wings i'll be honest i've never officially had buffalo wings i've made buffalo have you, you even go out rihanna apparently not i stay <laughs> in and make my own vegan versions i wait actually i don't know if buffalo sauce is vegan it's buffalo sauce made of no it's not because i use butter it's like Frank's red hot sauce and like butter and other stuff, but I don't <laughs> like the taste of them. <laughs> Why do you make it? Because I never had them and I wanted to try them because I saw a TikTok and the recipe looked so good. And then I made them and I was like, this just tastes like Frank's red hot and it's not good. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. Now that you mentioned Frank's red hot, I don't even know if I've had those. It's literally just like hot sauce. It's not good. I mean, depends. I just use it to add spice. I don't really like the taste of it. Yeah, I don't think I've had this before. I've had Tabasco and stuff like that. Yeah, I like and Tabasco. And then obviously too. Sriracha, but... Oh, yeah, obvious. I don't think I've had Frank's Red Hot before. Comment down below if you like Frank's Red Hot or, mm-hmm. or Buffalo Wings in general. Because I don't yeah. think you necessarily need to use Frank's Red Hot, but I don't <laughs> I don't know how it works <laughs> it seems like the very yeah we don't go out we don't know american it's a very very western food you know like buffalo, you wings? buffalo wings it's like mm-hmm. i think of like greasy american like wing restaurant yeah i kind of where there's like sports bars where yeah yeah watch sports games. bars are like you know the types of restaurants where there's like it's like um like hunting themed almost like there's uh-huh. like mounts on the wall. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I think they're the, explaining it fine. The chain Montana's. Oh, with the hat? I think Oh, wait, so. no, I think there's something else. Let it's me check. So, it's just very- um, Montana. Like hunting themed, like American hunting, also sports, but also like there's a deer head on the wall and like a fake right. Oh, it's like, not. It's not the one with the hat, but I do know what this is. Okay, I've never been. I don't even know if they have buffalo wings, but those types of restaurant chains. Let us know if they do. Yeah. Wow, that's a very interesting tangent we went on. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> if you're. If you have any good buffalo wing recipes, maybe drop them down below or a yeah. good place to get buffalo wings. Because and don't say wing stop because I don't think we have wing stop in Canada. Wing like, stop. I don't, I think, I just looked at wing stop and the next thing that came up with Canada. Nice. Perfect. Let me see right. if that, does wing stop, be, wing stop, there's a wing stop.ca. Is there actually? Tell me they have like one location. Don't tell me that they Let's are an see. actual Find a wing stop. They're going on this journey with me. Oh God. Oh. Um. Stop. What? Wait a minute. One second. Maybe it's because it's trying to. Wait, wait. Let me. I want to look up a random province. Calgary. Everyone's Alberta. Be listening to this now. Okay, there's nothing here. If thing Point Vancouver. Okay, it Vancouver. Says they, they had one in in Toronto and then they closed it. But apparently well, for me it's saying they're about yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, see yeah. that one too. I think that might be the only one because I'm looking up all these promises yeah. and I'm not getting anything. Okay, well, depending on when you listen to this episode, there actually may be a wing stop in Canada. Mm-hmm. But as of us recording this episode, there is not. So, mm-hmm. so maybe well, you tell us wing stop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they have brownies at wing stop? Triple chocolate chunk brownie. All I know it's is en- that it's encouraging me to order all these things, but then we don't even have a wing stop. Yeah. So where is it going to come from? We're going to ship it from America. Oh, gosh. 
honestly, I've seen a Wingstop mukbang. Okay, I need to explain myself. It was a Cody Ko video, and it was him and his girlfriend eating Wingstop. So, and it looked good, like really good. <laughs> maybe we'll have it. Yeah, maybe we'll do a, a I was going to say a Cody Ko mukbang. But we're gonna get him to come too or yeah can we get can we get kelsey as well yeah we gotta get we gotta get the whole crew that would be fun yeah part of me feels like it's wrong of us to do a wing stop food episode before we do something like jolly bee oh yeah i mean jolly bee we could we have like regular jolly bo- jolly bee mukbangs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll work this out. Yeah. And we'll have the the mukbangs ready. Yeah. We'll we'll have yeah. the dates up sooner or later. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> and we'll keep you updated about yeah. the wing stop opening. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, being Asian enough or not being Asian enough. <laughs> buffalo wings yeah and <laughs> american fast food again i oh to close off this fast food tangent you know carl jr mm-hmm. i one time i was at the vancouver airport and they had a carl jr i was surprised because oh. we don't I don't think we have Carl Jr. in Canada. No, I don't think so. And so I had it and it was pretty good. It was like, I mean, it was a burger. You can, you can only do a burger so many, so many ways. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. What would make me more, or would me having Carl Jr. gain me back some points for not being, I don't know if I want to say not being white enough, but like not being Canadian or whatever enough. Canadian. I guess. I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, people in the comments can also be the judge of that. Yeah. Okay. And if you in the comments say that you haven't had buffalo wings before, which please do let us know if you've also never had buffalo wings before, so we can send you or reply to you with an obligatory, do you even go out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, going back to not being Asian enough. (laughs) So when we were coming up with this episode, a very distinct moment or story popped up in my mind that I thought was a pretty good example of the judgment of someone being enough of their culture or knowing enough of their culture. And this one is an example that does come from mainland Asia, but it involves people that are not from mainland Asia. And it's the story, I feel like I'm telling a a folk story, a story as long as time or a tale is I can't do this. Anyways, (laughs) (laughs) it's the story of, (laughs) sorry, it's it's the story of Eileen Gu and Beverly Zhu, two, or Beverly Zhu. You have to understand that because I'm speaking in English, it flows better if I also say it the way that people in English say it. Yeah. Cue that guy in the video, the Korean guy. That are talking about asparagus. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's with the flow. Anyway, so the story of Eileen and Beverly, they're not I they're not from the same sport. They're, they were both athletes and competitors in the Winter Olympics, the 2022 Olympics. Eileen for freestyle skiing and then Beverly for figure skating. And so they're both Asian Americans, more specifically Chinese American. 
that competed for China instead of for the U.S. And so in order to do that, they had to renounce their citizenship. And they, more specifically, Eileen got a lot of hate for renouncing her citizenship because she was at the time considered to be one of the youngest or if not the youngest freestyle skier. And so Amer Americans, they were very mad that they couldn't get that milestone and she, she was probably gonna win gold medal, not for America. But then mm -hmm. if you really think about it, if she did stay and compete, I'm sure it was COVID racism and anti-Asian racism, people would definitely have not very nice things to say to her. And so the thing with the two of them is that there was a huge difference in the treatment that mm -hmm. they received when they were competing for China and when they were, and I mean specifically in China by Chinese people and people online, because Beverly was not as fluent in Mandarin as Eileen was. And so she got bashed like crazy online where people would say, say how, what's the, why are you even competing? If you're like, are you even Chinese? Mm. And this because Eileen was relative was pretty fluent in in Mandarin because she she learned it from her family, and she was able to answer questions in a way where it came off more naturally. Which mm. you have to understand that comes from learning, right? Yeah, and it's not. I mean, yeah, maybe one can argue that Beverly could have gotten some type of Chinese teacher prior, but that cost money and it's like a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and an another thing that plays into it, into this that's not entirely related to being Asian or culture is that Beverly, she fell during one of her competitions and you can you can attribute this to the hate because I'm sure with all the criticism and all the pressure that she was already facing from people from the country that she was supposed to be competing for mm -hmm. that like high stakes high risk yeah and so stressful. she she fell twice and so China went from being possibly in third place to fifth place. And people, again, bashed her. They hated her so much for it. And they, again, like I was saying, the whole, why are you even competing if you can't do it properly or if you can't even speak Chinese? Are you even Chinese? And so there, there were a lot of comments of people saying stuff like, why even renounce your citizenship and come play for us if you can't even do it? Oh my you can't, god. You can't even you can't even skate. Are you just gonna fall because of the pressure? Really? And this the people writing those comments could even skate in a straight line. Yeah. And this whole situation kind of highlights the parallels between this whole how one can be because they're the same, if not very similar ages. And it shows how one can be applauded so so much. Not that she doesn't deserve it. Eileen is very talented and so yeah, Beverly, yeah. and it's not Eileen's fault that Beverly got the hate. Not at all. And so one so loved and then the other one because they're just not fluent enough or not Chinese enough. People drag her so hard. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, that's not to say that if Eileen didn't fall. I mean, if Eileen did fall during one of her competitions, that people uh, wouldn't be mad. I'm, I'm sure people would be mad, but definitely not to the same extent. Yeah, because sure. Beverly already had all these other things where it's like, oh, okay, can't speak Chinese, can't even skate properly. Okay, why are you even here? Man. Right? And there was also, this is slightly unrelated, but slightly related. There was a conspiracy theory 
about Beverly's participation because some some Chinese uh, people on online were saying that maybe she was only chosen because her dad was a well-regarded Chinese like AI professor mm. at UCLA. Interesting connection. Don't Which see I, it, but yeah, I don't really know. I don't really see the connection. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe so, but because the thing is, would they be saying that? Would they be making those connections if they didn't already hate her so much? Yeah. Because true. she wasn't fluent enough. She fell, this and that, and the other thing. It's just, it's sad to see. And one thing, one thing that was really nice throughout the situation was that Eileen very publicly and also multiple times would show a lot of support for Beverly, even though I'm, I'm not sure if they, they really ever cross paths. If y'all are listening and you did, you, you can let us know. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. And online on Instagram and other places, she would talk about how she supports Beverly and how she's like very talented figure skater and she thinks and she was acknowledging like the pressure and talking about how it's very hard to perform in any sport in front of like an entire country especially when you technically not really you're not really welcome something like that and I, I thought it was really nice because she was the one that was loved. And so to show some support, even though it might not change people's minds, mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah, good mm -hmm. support. Like she's probably mm -hmm. the best person to show support for a situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it makes me wonder what would have happened if Beverly knew, was more fluent in Mandarin. Mm -hmm. It's the slightest difference. Cause you, of course we have to acknowledge the the incident with the fall but if she had known more mandarin would people have been not as cruel mm -hmm. yeah because I, I can mean like as someone who has been in like a performing arts type background like mm -hmm. the stress man like no wonder why she fell even if it didn't have to do with that like you could chalk it up to the stress like that is a lot yeah and she's very young you know she's 19 yeah and and i'm sure a lot of the people that were hitting on her were probably older yeah like never older skated in their life can't do like anything even close to that can't even stand on the ice properly like yeah exactly come on y'all yeah Shout out to Eileen and Beverly, if you're listening to this. If you're not, I mean, if you're not, then you can't, you don't have anything to say. <laughs> but I have a lot of respect for the two of them. Mm -hmm. So speaking of like social media environments, there are a couple terms that originate, I guess, from social media that encapsulate the whole not being Asian enough ideology, which is banana and coconut. So you guys might be wondering why, why the heck are you just saying two random fruits? Yeah, why are we calling people fruits, man? Yeah. And no, it's not because people are fruity. <laughs> it is something different. <laughs> Not expecting you to say that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what else was I supposed to say? They're fruits. Oh, yes. 
You're right. I just didn't expect <laughs> you to say that. <laughs> not because they're fruity. <laughs> yeah, not because they're fruity, but because they are specifically a banana or a coconut. So yeah, in case you are saying, Rihanna, what, what the hell are you talking about? Rihanna, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> banana and coconut refer to being a certain color on the outside and white on the inside. So banana is yellow on the outside and white on the inside and a coconut is brown on the outside and white on the inside. And that plays completely into the whole like not being Asian enough. You Your skin color may be a certain color, but on the inside, you're really white. And by white, we mean just not Asian, not necessarily like actually white, but in yeah. this context, white just means you're not Asian enough. It's, it's not about if you're, if you're mixed or something. Yeah, imagine like <laughs> you're a banana because on the inside, you're just like, a very stereotypical European person. I mean, <laughs> I was originally going to say technically that could be something that someone would say, but then I'm imagining a very stereotypical, something about this image is very funny. Just imagine you're from America and then for some reason, just somehow, you just asked very, I don't know, Italian or something. Yeah, no yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been called a banana? Um, no, but I've seen my friends calling each other coconuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it was always used as an insult. And like people used to get heated over this because as I said, like it was a pretty big competition. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Coconut was not a fun little term that we used lightly. Coconut was an insult <laughs> to you and your family, essentially. Uh, and so how would how was this term used? Could you give an example of maybe some dialogue? Sure. So as I said, mostly POC in my class or in my school before, or no, it was specifically my class. And there were like a couple token white kids, right? So when we would be discussing just as our little friend group, um, like one of our friends would look at the brown girl and be like, you know, you're a coconut, but the white girl over here, she's an egg. And <laughs> in case you guys are wondering what egg is, it means white on the outside, but yellow on the inside. So they would kind of just be like, look, insert this person. You may be brown, but you don't act like it. And look at white girl over here. She may be white, but she's more of a POC than you will ever be type thing. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then how would the other person react? It would turn into this huge fight? Well, at first, it was, it's one of those things where it would, it would start off as like a not harmless joke but a joke but then like the more that you say it the more that you can see this person just like stop like laughing at it and like mm. internalize it because mm. I'm pretty sure at some point like this person's nickname was like coconut or something like that so oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah not it's not a fun time I've never really seen or heard either of those terms be used in real life. Mm. I only ever really heard, for example, banana, maybe in a video, mm. or banana was used once in the Crazy Rich Asian movie, I remember. Oh, really? There was one part in the movie where someone was talking about being a banana. I see. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. that. that was how some people found out about the term banana, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. I it just I think it has to do with exposure in different environments. Yeah, for sure. It's like for example, I've never been called 
a banana. I'm pretty sure if I were to be called a banana, I think they might mean it as a compliment mm. <laughs> in that specific environment. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't take it as a compliment, but you know. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever fully become a banana until I've had buffalo wings. <laughs> My initiation. Yeah. Today's episode has been very food heavy. I just really Yeah. Jeez. Fruit. Isn't it interesting how there's banana and coconut, but then there's egg? Yeah. If not <laughs> another fruit. <laughs> Funny. That's a fruit but that egg. <laughs> Egg is white on the outside different. and yellow on the inside. Like in my context, when it's not, when I haven't seen it being used in comparison, it's always a very like nice, um, inclusive thing where it's like, oh, you're like an egg. Like you're just like us. You know? <laughs> yeah, I never really. Is, <laughs> it's more of like a, like we accept you and you really uh-huh. fit in with us rather than like a weird thing. Cause I know it can be interpreted weird, but yeah. I've heard egg being used once at school growing up, but it was because there was this girl, there was this white girl that very much so wanted to be Japanese. And she called herself an egg. I'm going to leave it at that interesting well Mm -hmm. but again different environment yeah do you think they'll ever i wonder how it came to be fruit in the first place who was the one that said you know what i just thought of something really clever that person is a banana (laughs) and then the other person's like oh what do you mean like they're yellow on the outside, but they're white on the inside, <laughs> like a banana. And then the other person's like, oh, that's their body. Kind of clever, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and then coconut. Yeah, I've also, I've never heard coconut used. I've only learned about it because someone else was talking about the concept of being a coconut and Mm -hmm. I was like oh I didn't know there was also a term for that yeah I will say it's not like a common thing to say but like it is something that people say sometimes Mm -hmm. if you are listening to this episode the main takeaway that you should take away (laughs) like take out (laughs) yeah take out because food you know Mm-hmm. with buffalo wings yeah and bananas and coconuts and maybe eggs yeah so all besides together. all that your takeout should be that being asian is not a competition and it is okay if you aren't super in tune with your culture indeed you it should it should never even be like Celebrating your cultural identity sh- should never be about, oh, I'm better than you at speaking this language, or I, mm-hmm. I don't know, I've been back to this country more than you have. Mm-hmm. Because is that even, like, that takes away from the whole part about celebrating, right? Mm-hmm. Then it's just like an un- your un- You're Asian, that person's Asian. And like, and like Sandra, Sandra O oh says, it's an honor just to be Asian. Period. I think that's, like, that's, that's another thing that you, you can <laughs> add to your takeout order. Yeah. Her quote. I really like that quote, to be honest. It's a good quote. Mm-hmm. And it sums up what we were saying about how you know, that person's Asian, this person's Asian, and you can both celebrate. Mm-hmm. Why, why should it have to be that only someone that knows this language to this degree mm-hmm. can celebrate, but then you can't? If you're Asian, you're Asian. Mm-hmm. 
and be proud of it. Yeah. Happy Asian Pacific Heritage Month, y'all. Yeah. We, we hope you had a good one. Mm -hmm. And here's the many more. Yay. Just like our episode. <laughs> so as always, thank you for tuning in today. We've left many comment prompts, as you can oh. see. And so feel free to leave a comment about, you know, have, have you ever been called a banana, coconut, egg? Have you witnessed someone else being called either of those things? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt like you weren't Asian enough? Or if you're listening to this and you're not Asian, have you ever felt like you weren't enough of your own culture? Mm -hmm. Why did you feel that way? Is it because you what haven't did they say? wings? <laughs> This is just going to become a thing. It is. <laughs> if this is going to become one of those, you know how in movies or maybe in a TV series, that's probably better. There's these running things or there's these iconic just moments. I think Buffalo Wings might become one of our memorable yeah. tangents or moments of fall. Fresh off, <laughs> fresh off Buffalo Wings. Fresh off the <laughs> I like that. That's okay. Hey, if we actually do the Buffalo Wing episode, that can be the name. Fresh off the Buffalo Wing. Or that can just be something we say in the video. Mm. At Wingstop specifically. F O V W. Yeah. How would you read that though? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I like it. Buffalo wing tasting. And if you have any recommendations, what should we order from Wingstop? Yeah. Can, wing, if someone from Wingstop is listening to this, can you get it? Please get in touch with us and maybe we can work out a sponsorship. You know that? That'd be nice. Yeah. Bob. <laughs> and want to stay connected with us check out our website in the description it contains links to our streaming platforms such as spotify anchor apple podcasts and more follow us for more behind the scenes content announcements and other random things we decide to put on there see you next time